Right, so yesterday we started uh, 4.1, looked at the uh, trig ratios in terms of a right triangle using opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay, today we're going to use those ratios to solve right triangles. Okay, anybody know what it means to solve a triangle? Like when you solve an equation, you're solving for the variable. Okay. But how about when you solve a triangle? Yeah, find out all the lengths of the sides, how, how much those are, and find out all the angles. So there's six things to find, three sides, three angles. Since we're always going to be solving a right triangle, you already know one of the angles right away. It's going to be 90. So now there's only two angles to find and three sides. So determine the lengths of all the sides and the measure of every angle. And when you're solving a right triangle, you have to start off with some information in addition to the 90. Okay, so every problem you do this week, it has a 90. Okay, but in addition, let's see what else you need. Okay, any guess what else I'd have to give you? I've got to give you two other pieces of information. Give you what? I could. I could give you two sides, and you could do it. Or an angle and a side. Angle and a side. Exactly. Have you done right triangle trig before? OK. So when you're solving a right triangle, I either have to give you, in addition to the 90, another side and another angle. Or I can give you both of the sides. There's a combination that's not listed up here, and that's giving you two angles. Anybody think why that wouldn't help? You know the 90, and I give you the other two angles. So now you know every angle in the triangle. How come that wouldn't help you? Because, I mean, it can be any size and have those same angles. Great. Right. Think of um, a triangle like this. If I take that same triangle, make a copy of it, make it bigger, have I changed any of the angles? No. I kept every angle the same, but I've changed all the lengths of the sides. So knowing all three angles would never, wouldn't help you do this. So either a side and an angle or two sides. So generally, the first thing we like to do is take all the information they're giving us and make a sketch. Okay, the reason a sketch is helpful is because you've got to figure out what side is opposite and what side is adjacent. If you can visualize all that in your head, great. But if you can't, you need to make a sketch. Okay, so just a um, quick reminder about how we're going to draw our triangles. Okay, I'll pretty much be drawing every triangle something that looks like that. Okay, my drawings are not going to be to scale. Okay, what are the um, letters that we use for the sides? A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Is there any particular way we like to use those letters? Like, is one of them a hypotenuse? Or? Yeah, we usually let the hypotenuse be C. And that's across from the right angle. Because C is across from the right angle, we don't need to name the angle across from C. It's the right angle. If it wasn't a right angle, we'd have to give it a name. Okay, but this week, you won't have to worry about it being anything but a right angle. How about the angle across from side A? We have to name that. Do you want to remember the name we give it? Theta. Theta we use just generically, but when it's across from A, we actually use a different Greek letter. Uh, beta is the one across from B. Yeah, alpha is the one across from A. So this is your diagram you can use every time to substitute in. And I'll show you how the diagram is then going to help us organize everything into a table. Okay, so here's our first problem. 
It says B is 2 and alpha is 40. Solve the triangle. So I want to know side A, side C, and I want beta. I want those three things. So here's how we'll, we'll organize our, our information. Okay, put all your sides in one column, A, B, and C. Put all your angles in another column, alpha, beta, and then the right angle. What I've done is I put a box around the things I need to find. Put a box around A, C, and beta. So you know exactly which three things you need to find. Okay, let's, um, let's make our sketch. Let's fill in what we know so then we can visualize what's opposite, what's adjacent, and all that. Okay, so B is going to be 2. Put that along the bottom. A we don't know. Alpha we know is 40. Uh, C we don't know. And beta we don't know. So there's our, there's our diagram. Not necessarily drawn to scale. What could I find here right away? Something I could really find in, you probably could have done this before I even taught you any trick this week. Andy? Beta. Yeah, we can get beta. What is beta? 50 degrees. 50. How do you know it's 50? That's correct. Because um, all three angles have to add up to 190. I mean 180. Yeah, all the angles have to add up to 90. You've already used 90 for the right angle. So alpha and beta have to be complementary. Okay, now we need to find A and C. Okay, so we've already got the first thing. Okay, to find A and C, we have to use information that was given to us. Okay? So I'm going to use the 2 somehow. And I'm going to use the 40. And now I can pick. I can find either A or C. Let's do A first. Okay. So we have three things involved here. The two things that we know and the one thing that we want to know. Next we have to pick a trig function. Your choices for every problem today are either going to be sine, cosine, or tangent. We're not using secant, cosecant, or cotangent. Mainly because we don't have buttons for them on the calculator. Right, so we're going to have to pick a trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent. And the trig function that you pick has to involve the side that you want to know okay, and the side that you already know. So from the perspective of the 40 degree angle, because that's what we're using, what's the name of side A? Opposite. So we need a trig function that has opposite. And what's the name of the side that's two? Adjacent. Okay, so there's only one trig function out of sine, cosine, and tangent that has those two. Tangent. Okay, so we're going to use tangent. And we're going to write down the tangent of our angle, 40 degrees, equals, and what's the definition of tangent? It's what divided by what? Opposite over adjacent. Okay. What's the side that's opposite the 40? That's A. What's the side that's adjacent? 2. Okay. Now we have an equation that we can solve for A. So to get A by itself, we just have to get rid of this division by 2. How do we undo dividing by 2? Multiply by 2. Multiply that side by 2. Multiply that side by 2. And there's your answer for A. We need to do that out, though. It's 2 times the tangent of 40. OK, so if you um, have your calculator, make sure you are in which mode? Degrees or radians? Degrees. Yeah, we're doing everything in degrees today. So if you're not in degrees, you need to check that. 2 times tangent of 40. So A is 1.5 uh, 
we'll go two decimal places, 1.68. A is 1.68. Okay. Now before I find C, why didn't I use beta? I could have, because I knew it. I could have used beta, because I know that's 50. I could have used the 2. And I could have done used the three things in green to find A. And it would have worked here. It would have been fine. But why is that generally not a good way to do it? Yep? Um, because then two would be on top and A would be on the bottom. And it would just take longer to do that. OK, so sometimes we're not going to be able to avoid that. We are going to end up with a variable on the bottom, which is one extra step to solve. Um, but in this case, there's another reason why I'm not using beta. I would absolutely stick with the way we did it, using the 2 and the 40. Why? Because we were given 40, and we had to find out what B was. Find out what beta was. beta was? What's wrong with finding out what it is? Because like, we could have made a mistake. Mm -hmm. so we could have made a mistake. If you use something that you calculated, to find something else, and you made a mistake finding it. Let's say you accidentally put down beta was 60, and you use that to find something else, well, you're going to get that wrong, too. So when we do right triangle trig, we don't use things that we calculated to find other things, just in case we made a mistake. We always go back to the two pieces of information that we're given, and we use those for the whole problem. Okay, so don't use anything you calculate to find other things. Right? So, connecting in with that idea, now I know A and I know B. What's one way that I could find C? I could use the Pythagorean theorem, but why am I not going to do it that way? Because we had to find A. If you made a mistake finding A, and you use it in the Pythagorean theorem to find C, then C is automatically wrong. It was also a long decimal. Well, yeah, that's another great reason. Um, I don't know if I still have it. But that, wasn't the, that wasn't the exact answer, 1.68. We rounded it. If you use something that you've rounded to find something else, then you're going to have more error in the answer. Okay, So we're going to go back to the two pieces of information that we're given. We're going to use the 2. We're going to use the 40. And this time we want to find C. Okay, so we're going to go through the same thinking we just did. We're going to determine the names of these two sides, and then we're going to figure out which trig function. Uh, we know it's not tangent. We already used that. So it's either sine or cosine. That's going to help us find C. Okay, so C is our hypotenuse. Um, what's the name of side two? Adjacent. adjacent. What's the trig function that has adjacent and hypotenuse in it? Cosine. Cosine. Yeah, sine has opposite. So this time we want cosine. Any question why we're going to use cosine? Cosine will involve the side that we know, adjacent, and the side we want to know, hypotenuse. We don't want to involve opposite at all here. That's something we calculated. Okay, so we're going to use cosine. Okay, so cosine of 40 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. 2 divided by c. There's nothing we can do about having a variable on the bottom. That's, that's going to happen. But the first thing we like to do when there's a variable on the bottom is get rid of the fraction with that variable on the bottom. So what could we multiply both sides by to get rid of the variable in the bottom of that fraction? C. Yeah, c. Multiply that by c. And that by C. It doesn't get C by itself, but at least it gets rid of the variable on the bottom. Okay. Now you've got C times cosine of 40. Remember, cosine of 40 is just a number. I don't care what it is till the very end of the problem, but it's just C times a number equals another number. So it's exactly the same way you would solve this equation. 
I said to you, c times 5 equals 10. Our next step in this equation is going to be exactly the same as what it would be here. Yeah? Uh, we multiplied by c over 1. Uh, but <coughs> could you get 2c and then divide that by 2 and divide cosine 40 degrees over 2 by 2? So you're asking, could you multiply by c over c? Yeah. What's going to happen if you do that? You're going to get a c in the denominator on the other side. And then we're going to have to fix that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our goal here is to try to get rid of all the denominators. So that would work on the right, but then you'd just be moving the problem to the left. Okay, so what would be my last step to get C by itself? Divide by cosine 40. Yeah, I'm going to divide by whatever the cosine of 40 is. I'll never know what the cosine of 40 is. I'll show you why, because I'm going to type it in a certain way. And now we just have to do this out. C is 2 divided by the cosine of 40. If you look back at the original problem, all that happened, this was the original problem, is the cosine 40 and the C just switched places. It's 2 divided by cosine 40. In this kind of setup, that always happens. So I might use that trick in the future. Just switch the denominator with what's on the other side. All right, so we got Two, again, make sure you're still in degrees, divided by cosine 40. Okay, yeah, I don't know what the cosine of 40 is, but I know the answer to the problem is 2.61, 2.61. Now, if you had extra time on the test, you could check your answer using the Pythagorean theorem. And now, if it comes out close, it's not going to be exact because you rounded, then that would be a pretty good chance you did it right. Okay. Try 1.68 squared plus 2 squared and see if it equals 2.61 squared. It should be, should be pretty close. On the test, you might not have enough time to check it and do every problem twice. Okay, but let's just check this one. So 1.68 squared plus 2 squared gives me 6.8224. Take 2.61 and square it. Instead of 6.82, I got 6.81. Okay? That's because of our rounding. But that's a good check, and it means we're, we're probably correct here. Any questions on that? That's how you solve a, a right triangle. Okay. So why don't you um, give this one a shot on your own? It's very, very similar setup. I'm starting you off with a side and an angle. You're going to use this side, A, and this angle, beta, B, to, uh, to find B and C. Okay. Try not to use anything you calculate to find other things. Always go back to A and beta. All right, so what's, uh, what's the first thing we could find here really, really easily with pretty minimal amount of trade? Max? Alpha. Yeah, we could find alpha. And how much is it? 70 degrees. 70 degrees. Okay. Are we going to use that angle to find B? No. Nope. How about to find C? No. Nope. No. We're always going to stick with what we were given. Okay, at this point, if we haven't drawn a picture, um, now, is, now is a good time. So let's put A over here. If I put A on the left, what angle has to be on the lower right side? It has to be alpha. Okay. I labeled it as alpha because it wasn't given. Okay. B, we go on the bottom. Beta, up there. And that's C. Let's, um, let's start with B. So we're going to use that angle that side, and we're going to find B. Okay, let's start with the, um, the names. Sean, what's the name of 
side B, since it's all the way across from the 20. So the three, uh, three traces are opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. No, it's not adjacent. Adjacent means it's right next to your angle. So it's not the adjacent, so it would have to be... Or is it a hypotenuse adjacent and... Opposite. Opposite. Yeah, yeah. opposite. It has to be opposite. Okay, it's the side that's furthest away. Okay, so that's opposite. And how about Emily? What's... Um, you just kind of set it. What's the side on the left? What's the name of it? in terms of opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Adjacent. Yeah, it's adjacent. So we want a trig function that's got opposite and adjacent. Okay. Shelby, which trig function is that? Tangent. tangent. So the tangent of 20 okay, is going to equal. Um, and then Amy, what's the side opposite? Um, yeah, what's the name or what's its length, if we know it? So C would be the hypotenuse. So in tangent, your ratio is opposite over adjacent. So I need to fill in those two. So look at your angle. And we go across from it, and we see a B. Start with B. Okay. Now in the bottom, it goes adjacent. And the adjacent side is how much? Six. Okay. So that's our equation to find B. Okay, so multiply by six. Multiply by six. Now I'll just do six times tangent 20. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, so about two point. 1.8. Okay, 2.18. Anybody else get 2.18 for, for B? Yeah, good. Okay, now I have A and B. Why not just do the Pythagorean theorem to get C? Yeah, because B has been uh, calculated by us. Could be wrong. And it might not even be, it's not exact. All right. So you can still get partial credit even if you get B wrong. You could still get C right. Um, so, Michaela, what are the two things that I'm going to use to find C? Yep. So, what were the two things we were given? They were how, actually, how long are they? Perfect, yep. A is 6, B is 20, <coughs> and now we want C. Okay, so let's go through that process again, which we figure out which side is opposite, what's adjacent, what's hypotenuse. Okay, so Kyle, what's the name of side C? That's hypotenuse. Good. And side that's six, Andy? Good, adjacent. We have hypotenuse, we have adjacent. Uh, Zach, which trig function has hypotenuse and adjacent? Cosine. Cosine, good. Alright, so my cosine of 20 equals, and what's the definition of cosine? What so over what? Adjacent, or, uh, sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. 6 divided by C. Now in the last problem, we, we had a variable. What was the trick I said you could do with the variable in the bottom there? Yeah, just switch it with what? Yeah, cosine 20 and C, you're going to switch places. If you don't want to use that trick, you can do out the algebra. But that's, that's what happens. Okay, so let's do that out. 6 divided by cosine 20. And we get about 6.39.
And that's it. Okay, any questions on solving that triangle? Okay, so that's if you're given a side and an angle. Okay, what's, um, what's different about this one? <coughs> Something here that we, kept, we were able to do right away in the last two. You're not going to be able to do this time. Adam? This time you have two sides. Yeah, this time you have two sides. Okay, so this is going to be a little different. Still the same goal. I want to know C, alpha, and beta. What can I find here? Similar to, not quite directly, but using a formula that we haven't used today, um, that'll help us find C. Yeah, Iris? Yeah, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find C. Okay. Now, I said earlier, you've got to be careful about using it, but in this case, A is given, B is given. There's no problem. Everything you're plugging into it is given. So 3 squared plus 2 squared equals C squared. 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. So you can get c squared equals 13. And how about Olivia? How do we um, get c by itself? You take the square root. Right. Take the square root. So c is the square root of 13. Okay, if they want a decimal, we'll just type that in. It's about 3.61. Right, now, Ben, am I, am I going to use that 3.61 to find anything else? No, because we calculated it. Any question on that? All right, let's draw our diagram. I'm going to put B on the bottom, put A on the left. So alpha goes in the lower right, beta goes in the top. And C is my hypotenuse. It doesn't make a difference if you find alpha or beta first. You can do them in either order. Okay, so how about uh, Brandon? Which one do you want to do first? Alpha. Alpha. Okay, so we're going to use the two things that we were given, two and three, and we're going to find alpha. So we have to determine what trig function we need. Okay, to figure that out, just look at what the names of the sides are. Do you know opposites, adjacents, or hypotenuse? Opposite and adjacent. Yep, we know opposite is 3, adjacent is 2. So what trig function is that? Tangent. Tangent, Tangent of alpha equals, and what's going to be my fraction on the other side? 3 over 2. What's a little different about this equation than the last couple problems that we had? We're finding an angle rather than a sine line. Right. We're calculating an angle. So then we have to use the inverse trig function. Right. We have to use inverse trig. Right. So the next step is to get rid of tangent. What do you think a lot of people tell me to try to do, but you can't do here? Divide by tangent. Divide by tangent. OK, tangent's a function. It's a word. Um, you can't divide by a word. You can only divide by a number or a variable. If you want to get rid of a function, say like the square root function, you have to use another function to cancel it out, like squaring. Square and square root cancel. So if we want to get rid of the tangent function, we've got to use another function that will cancel it out. Inverse tangent. So we're going to take the inverse tangent of what's on the left and what's on the right. Now we saw this formula <coughs> here. Inverse tangent of tangent of alpha. And we know that this formula only works if alpha is between negative 90 and positive 90. But why am I guaranteed that that's going to happen here? I haven't even solved it yet, but I guarantee you alpha is between negative 90 and positive 90. Because the two angles that you're looking for have up to 90. Yeah. We're looking for an angle in a right triangle. It has to be greater than 0, and it has to be less than 90. 
So this formula is going to work perfect. And it always will. If we were dealing with inverse cosine, we'd have to make sure our angle is between 0 and 180. Well, I guarantee you any angle in this triangle is between 0 and 180. In fact, I can guarantee it even further. It's between 0 and 90. Okay. So take the inverse tangent of each side. You get alpha equals inverse tangent of 3 over 2. So we type it in, and see what we got. So 56.31 degrees. Now quickly, we can do a check in our head and see what beta should come out to. Beta should be 33.69. But why is what I just did kind of risky? If I do it that way, yep. Um, because you did alpha I did alpha. I did 90 minus alpha. So if I got alpha wrong, I'm going to get beta wrong. So let's find beta the same way. It's, it's just as quick. So now we're going to use the 3, the 2, and we want beta. What are the names of the two sides that we know this time? Yeah, it's opposite and adjacent again, but what's happened? Yeah? The opposite and adjacent have switched. Yeah, it's just the opposite and adjacent have switched places. Because now we're looking at it from a different perspective. So now my opposite is 2, my adjacent is 3. So we're going to start out tangent beta equals opposite over adjacent. And we're going to do the same thing we did last time. To cancel out tangent and get beta by itself, we need inverse tangent on the left and on the right. Okay, so beta is the inverse tangent of 2 thirds, which we already know should be 33.69. But if we get that answer doing it this way, then we've already double checked our answer. We guaranteed to be right. And it is. 33.69. Okay, so that's how you solve a problem when they start you off with two sides. Anytime I start you off with two sides, you're going to have to use inverse trig. Okay, you're going to have to use inverse trig. For the other two types of problems, you won't need them. This is another one that's very similar. You could try that one later if you want. But let's try this one. Not an overly interesting application, but it is a, a basic application. Okay, it says you're leaning a 20-foot ladder against a house. The angle between the ladder and the house is 17 degrees. I want to know how high will the ladder reach. In other words, how high will the very top of the ladder be? Okay. First, just using a little bit of common sense, is the ladder going to reach 20 feet high? No, because it's leaning at an angle against the house. The only way it would reach 20 feet is if you put it straight, went straight up. Okay, but you've got to give it a little bit of an angle so it uh, doesn't fall. Okay, let's... Um, Make a sketch. Okay, here's the ground. Here's our house. And we're going to lean a ladder against it. Like that. Assume the house was built correctly and it's perpendicular to the ground. It says the ladder is 20 feet long. What's that going to be? It's the length of the ladder, but kind of in the diagram I'm drawing, it becomes the what? It's the hypotenuse. Okay, so we have a ladder 20 feet long. And what about the 17 degrees? Where does that go? Oh. Yeah, it goes up at the top. That's the angle between the ladder and the house, not the ladder and the ground. Okay, so make sure you look at that carefully. This is 17 degrees. 
And what I want to know is the height of that triangle. That's basically all I want to know. I'm not asking you how far away from the house is the base of the ladder. That would be a different question I could ask, but I'm not this time. So let's just solve for the height of the triangle. So we have two pieces of information we know. One piece of information we don't. Now that we get a diagram, it's just like solving a uh, problem like we had before. What are the names of the two sides that I know? <coughs> yep, hypotenuse and adjacent. So that has to be which trig function? Cosine. Yep, cosine. So it's always the cosine of an angle equals, um, what's the side adjacent? x over 20. Good. And now we just got one step to solve for x. What's our last step? Yep, multiply by what? 20. 20. Sure. Multiply by 20. Multiply by 20. So if you've got a 20 foot ladder and you lean it against a house at an angle of 17 degrees, let's see how high the ladder is going to reach. Still going to reach pretty high, 19.13, if we round to two. Okay, any guess at what angle the ladder would have to be at for it to only reach half as high, instead of 20 feet, 10 feet? Okay, so a lot of people guess 45. Try typing that in. Try 20 cosine 45. So actually, if you lean the ladder at a 45 degree angle, it still reaches up pretty high. Yeah, it almost reaches up, you know, three-fourths of the way, almost 15 out of 20 feet. You'd actually have to put that ladder um, all the way down to 30 degrees, which would be impossible in real life to put it at that angle. Uh, 20, where's it, the other way. 60, sorry, the other way. So if you had that at a 60 degree angle, which would make a 30 with the ground, that's what I was thinking of, then that ladder would only reach half as high. Okay, so you've got to get that, ladder, that angle pretty big between the house and the ladder before it only reaches half as high. Okay, but that usually trips people up. They think 45 because it's halfway, but it doesn't quite work that way. Okay, any questions on that? Um, so tonight, um, same page as last night for the second half that you did, it's page 255, um, 31 to 39 odd, 43, 47, and 51 to 55 odd. Okay, so we'll go over that tomorrow, we'll do a little bit of review, and we'll have our test on Friday.